What's up? We got a lot to do on the 240, so we're gonna hop right into it. The first thing that I wanna handle is gonna be the oil change. Then we have to do gear oil. We have an axle that needs to be changed. If I tell you this, I know you guys are gonna be like, damn, dude, why did you do that again? But the front is dropped down half an inch. And I know it's like, bro, every video this dude is going back and forth adjusting the height. But hey, that's what you gotta do if you wanna get that perfect ride height. I did take out the rake or the jack in the car. So right now it's even. The front and the back are perfectly level, which will give it that tiniest, tiniest bit of tilt in the front because we're 17 up front and 18 in the back. But it doesn't look bad. I lowered it, it doesn't look bad. And I'm not worried about alignment, and you'll know why in a future video, you'll see. If you haven't watched the latest video, the name is changed, yes, and uh, our decal is off. This oil has been in for a single event, so I'm not draining all of it. I'm just gonna drain. It's not gonna be a full, let it sit, let it drip type of thing. Yeah, Cause you can see how clean that oil is too. Okay, so for now, that's all we can do with the oil change. I need to wait until nine in the morning to be able to place the order for the filter. When the filter gets here, I have the oil pan on the floor. We're gonna drop the car down right above it and loosen the filter from the top because you can't reach it from the bottom using the tool that I have, which looks like this. And this is very helpful. It doesn't slip or anything. It goes right over the top of the oil filter and just takes it out with ease. It's a half inch drive. If you don't know, I did tear the boot. We can start on the rear axle that needs to be replaced, which is over here from PDL. I got it for about 120, not bad. Oil is like almost off our checklist. I do have an actual checklist which is like not even a quarter of the stuff we need to do. Now, I want you guys to start making this a common practice just so you are not having any issues in the future because I've had problems with this car before where I just don't label something or I don't do things the proper way in a bad way. For example, when I spun my bearing, like slightly spun it before the full SR rebuild, that was because the car had sat for so long and I went and started it up right away instead of priming the oil. So little things like this go a long way. Painter's tape, Sharpie right here. Every time I come out of the shop and I walk towards my car before I'm about to do something and do some work on it, take a Sharpie and we're gonna write down important things. Car does not have any oil in it right now because we drained it and we have not finished the oil change. You need to write that down. No oil, obviously. Anyone who knows cars sees that, they know not to start it, but just put don't start. Just in case, you never know, just in case, especially if you're working in a shop with other guys, this is a must because people don't know what you've done to the car or the project. They see it one day untouched and the next day it has no oil looking the same. They start it, they have a really, 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 really bad day. And then it needs the filter, which is not as important, but it's something I wanna write down so I remember because I tend to always forget to change my oil filter when I do oil changes. So that's why it's important to write that down and no oil, you start the car with no oil and you guys know what happens, so. We're gonna get the wheel off and start this actual job, which might be a pain in the butt, but I'm trying to knock it out, get it done, and move on to the next task. We're using our Milwaukee Impact, which is half inch drive. We got one of these plastic protection sockets. This is just a plastic cover that goes over the socket. Game changer if you have nice wheels or even stock wheels and you just don't want to damage or scratch them up. Milwaukee Impact Gun changes your life with every job, subframe work, anything under the car, wheels, just everything. This is. All right, we haven't lost a lot of tread from our last event, but I do want to kind of go over the wear pattern, seeing if we're seeing anything weird with the tire from our last event. These Ironmans last a very long time, but you do kind of lose that added grip. The wear pattern looks good on this, nothing crazy, not really anything we can see. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit of camber wear. Here's my plan, my goal. I don't want to disconnect any arms whatsoever. Uh, I don't think I will have to. I don't want to take off the brake caliper. Let's pull this cotter pin out. There's the axle nut. There's the cotter pin. We'll have to bend it back with some pliers and we'll pull it out. We're probably going to take a brush or something, clean this up, clean up this ring inside. And then also we'll clean up the actual space your backside. Boom. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Now you know. Before I get into anything else, I wanna show you guys the gear oil that I use on the 240. I am running a OEM SR20 Trans, and I use MT90, which is Redline. I've just been using this for the longest time. I did a lot of research back in the day on the forums. It is GL4, 
that does matter. Four quarts of MT90, our oil is VR1, say 40. I was told that say 40 means that it's 40 viscosity all the time, hot, cold, whatever. The pressure, oil pressure goes down when the car gets hot because the oil is thinner. We're gonna pop this off real fast though. Gonna pop this stinky stuff loose. Now that work is over. Not that the oil is drained. It changed my life. Wow! Needs gear oil. It's on there now. Here's our list. I'm gonna get this cleaned up, and then we'll reinstall it. And then after that, obviously, we have to put the actual gear oil in. Cleaning up the drain plug now. That loud sound is the ultrasonic. Should have seen my drain plug. It was covered in shavings. The magnet, yeah. Good. It's getting kind of late. Oil change and gear change halfway done. Like I mentioned before, I'm just staying organized with everything. I cleaned up, so now we're gonna lock up shop and I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Okay guys, so we're back in the shop. We got Luna in here today. It's Saturday. We have to pick back up on the axle. I wanna do the dirty things first, so we're gonna finish the oil change, which is basically just swapping out the filter. I'm not gonna put oil in the car yet. We'll wait until we're done with the axle and then we'll do the trans oil and the engine oil. I mentioned earlier, there's no space to use our tool underneath the car with the oil filter, so we're gonna drop it down and change it from over top. Get some light in here. I don't like oil filter wrenches because they tend to just slip on the filter and they become a pain, they crush the filter. This slides right over top of the filter. It's half inch drive and the socket or the nub for the half inch doesn't protrude past the actual housing. Cause I've bought some before that do that and you can't seat this completely onto the filter. This gives you about three quarters, a little bit over a half of an inch actually to actually sit on the filter. Here's the new filter. We're just gonna have these kiss each other. Oh, it's more of a make out, damn, okay coming in with our new filter, and I am sorry if I'm blocking anything. I just gotta see initially, and then we should be good. Okay, that's pretty good. With the driver's side axle, because the exhaust is right here in the way, and so there's just no room to really do anything I was also on the floor of my home shop. On this side, I got all the space in the world. So I'm hoping this is a very simple, easy task to do. The bolts for the inner part of the axle are going to be 12. So I got two 12 mil wrenches. Well, that one was kind of tight, but I should be able to Basically push this back, there we go, and angle this. Oh, this is gonna, oh. Keep that axle nut on so we can keep hitting. Okay, which, there we go. All right, boom. And that is the fastest I've ever taken on an axle. There's the damage. There's the nub I was telling you about. I'm hoping it's in focus still. This is what it looks like underneath. You guys can see the grease, all the dirt that we have to clean before we put the new one in. It's nothing crazy, but all the gunk's gone. You can see the strap for the fuel tank. It doesn't have any gunk on it anymore. I wonder if this comes with a new cotter pin. Got Luna giving it a sniff right here, sniff test. We're 
gonna try to give it some force here. There we go. Making some progress and bam. All right, new axle is in. I can, there we go. Does that mess up the other ones? No, not really. There we go. I'm just making sure this sits flush because I don't want any problems. Okay, perfect. All three edges, the two bolts for each section are sitting, it's flush. It's flush. I don't know why I'm overcomplicating that explanation. Shit, I'm just gonna like. Stop working on his car. The next day has arisen. The next day has a wreck. It's the next day we're back in the. Sh uh, last night we basically finished up the axle, so the inner bolts. Remember that vehicle is not going to quiet down anytime soon. Back in the shop, it's the next day. Yes, sir. I can't do this. This is the new axle nut that we put on. Cotter pin, we put that on, bent it back. That's all good, we torqued this down. That wasn't too bad, new axles in, wheels back on. So now we need to fill up the trans with fluid and then we'll do the oil. Now this boot can get taken off and pull up at the same time. There we go. Shifter is coming right out. Here's our shifter assembly. So now I'm going to take the car back up. What we're going to do is pop off the fill plug on the transmission. Okay guys, so drain plug is stuck on there. It is not the end of the world, guys. We can fill from the shifter, just measure it out properly. So we're gonna fill it basically through this hole right here. This, this might take you a couple tries, guys. Don't get frustrated. Um, it's just how this is. Put the shifter back on. Nice, new fluids. Car is probably really happy for that. I don't know if you guys noticed, but off camera the other day, I actually installed my two decals. So DFR stands for Drive Focus Redesign. Bontuline, you guys know Bontuline already. Oh.